a week back, we unboxed the new Oppo Reno5 4G and Oppo Reno5 5G. These are the company's newest style and camera focus handsets designed for mobile creators. Today, we will be taking a look at the Oppo Reno5 with 5G. To recap, we noted in our impressions article that we were pretty impressed with its design, screen, and good speed out of the box. We also noted that due to its use of a 5G-capable chip, this is the more now and future-ready device between the two. To check the unboxing, build, and design in our impressions, visit the link that we added in the description below. Now, we will share with you our full review. So hi, this is Peter of Gizguy.com and let's see if the Oppo Reno5 5G is the right phone for you. Out of the box, we were very impressed with what we saw on the display of this device. Number one, the bezels. The bezels are super slim. The top bezel is tiny, the side bezel is tiny as well, and the shin bezel is slightly thicker but it is slimmer than a lot of other 4G smartphones that we tested in the past. For example, there is a huge difference in the size of the bezel below coming from the Reno4 4G and this Reno5 and Reno5 IG phones. This will provide a more immersive screen experience as the screen real estate is bigger than the competition and previous generation phones. Moreover, Oppo is using a nice type of display. In particular, this is a 6.4 inch 2.5D curved AMOLED screen with 90Hz refresh rate, full HD resolution, at 411 pixels per inch. Thanks to its use of a 1080p AMOLED display, the images are crisp, the colors are accurate yet still punchy at the same time, and look at the contrast, look at the blacks, look at how these produce colors. This is a pretty nice type of display. Even the viewing angles are very nice. And thanks to its use of a 90Hz uh, refresh rate, the transition when it comes to animation is so much smoother. And let's say for example, you will play some games that supports high refresh rates, you will be able to have a smoother gaming experience compared to other phones with 60Hz panels. In its display settings, you can even switch to the light mode or dark mode depending on what you want and it even has an auto switch. The auto brightness works very well, it has an eye comfort mode to prevent blue light from damaging your eyes especially when you're reading in the dark and it has the auto screen off, auto rotate and you can adjust the color temperature. It even has this natural tone display that kind of works like the True Tone of Apple. My only concern here in its display settings is I can't find the switch to turn off the 90Hz mode. That's important for some apps that do not need to use the high refresh rate mode of this device and it will help in saving power. As we all know, the high refresh rate mode eats more power compared to the regular 60Hz mode. So I hope that Oppo will be able to add that feature on the final software of this device. And this can actually go pretty bright. Actually, in terms of specs, Oppo said that it has up to 750 nits of brightness. Personally, I find its display to be bright enough even for outdoor use. It will only suffer a little when the sun directly hits its display as it will be a little bit more reflective than usual. Overall, we find its display to be amazing for Netflix, YouTube, viewing photos, gaming, and more. For gaming, we even find its touch response to be accurate. In particular, this has a 180Hz touch stamping rate. so. I think that helped with the accuracy of our touches when it comes to playing games. For your speakers, it only has a single down-firing speaker below. And personally, I would have liked it better if it has a stereo speaker setup as it will produce a wider soundstage and maybe an even louder output. But fortunately, the type of speaker that Oppo use in this device is pretty loud. In particular, we find it to be loud enough to fill a quiet room with music and it isn't distorted even if you crank the volume all the way up to 100%. Actually the audio from its speaker has a surprisingly wide soundstage and respectable separation. 
even if this is just a single speaker setup. However, do not expect bass response to be strong. But fortunately, as I mentioned earlier, clarity is okay overall. Audio quality is decent for a smartphone with a single speaker. For Bluetooth audio, it works perfectly even with other brands. Let's say for example, this OnePlus uh, DWS earphones, it is working pretty well with this device. I would also like to highlight that it even shows some information regarding the battery of your favorite wireless earphones along with the type of codec it is using for playback. This allowed us to confirm that the phone's Bluetooth connectivity supports LDAC if your audio gear has LDAC as well. This is great for high resolution audio listening. For calls, the ear speaker of this device performed really well. Actually, I find it to be clear enough and loud enough for calls. For cameras, as you can see, it has plenty of cameras at the back. You'll find a 64MP main shooter at f1.7 with PIDA Focus and EIS, followed by an 8MP at 2.2 secondary shooter. It is a 119 degree ultra wide angle camera and a 2MP macro camera as well as 2MP mono camera for depth sensing. And of course, it has an LED flash located here in the camera island as well. Similar with other OPPO devices that we tested in the past, it has an AI mode for scene enhancement. There is an auto HDR and I like that. It also has a flash mode and you get to see here plenty of filters. Also, you can easily switch to the ultra wide angle. You can easily switch to the 2x zoom mode and it even has a 5x digital zoom mode. And the maximum zoom of this device is 20x and that's nice even if this device doesn't have a periscope camera for uh, optical zooming and even if it is just a digital zoom the digital zoom that oppo used here is pretty respectable overall i also find that it has the portrait mode although you cannot adjust the level of blur here and for the other modes, it has time lapse, extra HD, macro for super close up shots, slow mo, it can record 1080p and 720p slow mo, pro mode, the pro mode is the pro camera mode, and it has shutter speed up to 32 seconds, white balance uh, adjustments, manual focus, exposure uh, adjustments, and of course the ISO, you can adjust it up to 6400. That's actually higher than the usual. 32,000 from other camera phones and here it has a film mode and a dual view mode panorama and sticker the film mode this is actually a new one and this will allow you to shoot pro videos and you can even enable the stabilization here you can have a grid you can easily switch to the ultra wide angle mode and overall i think that this film mode is a nice to have feature especially for those content creators that knows how to use the pro camera mode of their devices especially when it comes to taking videos here you can adjust the white balance you can adjust the exposure you can adjust the shutter speed and you can adjust the ISO. I just don't know why you can't access the manual focus on the ultra wide angle mode, but the manual focus uh, it is working for the main camera of this device. You can adjust it, special. You can adjust it to your liking. For selfies, it has a single 32 MP f 2.4 shooter. To recap, the Oppo Reno 4 last year has two cameras in front and the other one is for gesture controls but this time it only has a single camera and that single camera as I mentioned earlier is the 32MP f2.4 sensor. This selfie camera also has the auto HDR, several filters, portrait mode and it even has a night mode. The night mode of this selfie cam really helps especially when it comes to taking photos in the dark. Now let's take a look at the camera samples we took using the back and front cameras of this phone including videos. As expected, the cameras of this phone perform very well in daylight. Colors are consistent across all the cameras. Even the ultra wide camera is impressive and detailed as well. Also, as you saw earlier, this can zoom nicely up to 10x. Even the 20x zoom is decent and it will enable its users to read text from afar that even our naked eye can't see. This phone also has a macro mode and that macro mode will enable its users to take close-up images, actually super close-up images, 
However, it will only work on areas with bright lighting. This phone also has a portrait mode, but it is just decent. For me, it is far from being the best around. And occasionally, it fails. It isn't that impressive in terms of background to subject separation. Hopefully, Oppo can do something about its portrait mode on future updates. The indoor performance using the 64MP shooter is impressive. Quality degrades when you use the ultra-wide angle camera though. Same with low light, the 64MP camera is decent. The ultra-wide camera will produce softer and grainier photos. The solution? Use the night mode. And mind you guys, this device has one of the nicest type of night modes that you will see and this price point. For me, it shoots faster and better night modes compared to all their iterations of Oppo phones. The night mode of this device is not perfect but it is not cartoonish compared to older types of night modes as well. For selfies, the overall quality is good even for indoor shots but expect to have an extra smooth looking skin tone using the phone's AI face beauty technology. In low light, will suffer on auto mode. Fortunately, even if there are artifacts, the night mode plus screen flash combination of this device will help you take better selfies in the dark. For videos, impressive. This records up to 4K videos using its main camera with stabilization up to 30 frames per second. And of course, it has plenty of details. An ultra-wide video at 1080p is a bit distorted though. HDR is decent as well. If you want to further increase its stabilization, the ultra-steady mode for both the main and wide camera works. The ultra-steady mode will just crop the frame a little to ensure better stabilization. And because of that, the Ultra Steady Pro even lessened the distortion of its wide cameras for videos. It also shoots smooth looking 1080p 120fps low motions and 720p 240fps low motion videos in daylight. For selfies, it has 1080p Ultra Steady selfies but if you want a wider selfie with lesser stabilization, switch to the normal mode. Also, take a look at this. Oppo now has a dual view video mode. So hi, this is Peter of ThisGuy.com and today we are trying Oppo Reno 5 5G's dual video mode. So here as you can see, my face is on the left side and on the other side you can see the shot take, being taken by the main camera of so this phone. You can even zoom, zoom like up to five times, then switch back to the regular 1x mode of its video. This is a pretty nice one. For the specs, this device is equipped with a 7nm EUV Snapdragon 765G Octocar processor with a maximum flap speed of 2.4GHz. This one is paired with the Adreno 620 GPU, 8GB of RAM LPDDR4X, 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage, it is non-expandable sadly. On paper, that type of specs is decent and it will be good enough for most. And in terms of actual performance, no problem. This is a pretty fast phone, a very responsive one, it can multitask very well, and it runs all of the apps that I know with ease. Of course, it won't be faster than high-end smartphones, but for the price, this is pretty fast enough. And it is as fast as the OnePlus Nord 5G and the Vivo V20 Pro 5G. Those are two of the similarly priced phones that you will find in this price point. For benchmarks, only those with a flagship chipset will perform better than this device. And overall, social media users and those who just like to multitask on their phones will never have an issue with this. To nitpick, I would have liked it better if Oppo included a micro SD slot. As to some people, the 128GB of storage is already not enough. But Oppo didn't mention if this device has some sort of cooling system. But based on our daily experience, especially when it comes to browsing videos, uh, checking the internet, um, viewing photos, and playing games occasionally, it never heats up to an alarming rate. It gets warm at times, but just warm, not hot. Speaking of gaming, this is a pretty capable gaming device, especially for the price. We were able to run the Call of Duty Mobile on high settings and Mobile Legends on high settings without any issues. It even has this Game Space Assistant that will automatically adjust the resolution has the brightness lock, it can block notifications, it can even reject calls, and you can even switch to the low power mode, balance mode, and competition mode. When you switch to the competition mode, frame drops will be lesser, 
However, it will heat up a little bit more compared to the normal mode. But if you are in an air-conditioned area, no problem. Just use the competition mode and this phone will help you win some games. Now check this Call of Duty gameplay that we will show now. For connectivity, it has dual band Wi Fi, 5G, 4G, LTE, Bluetooth 5.1, OTG, NFC, GPS, AGPS, GLONASS, Beidou, QCSS, Galileo, and dual SIM slots. That's a new complete connectivity experience that you don't normally see on mid range smartphones. Speaking of 5G, this device has a nice type of 5G connectivity. It is really fast, way faster than 4G, and pretty stable. All you need is just an area where you can try this next generation 5G technology. We use it to stream Netflix videos seamlessly, watch YouTube videos without any lag, play online games without buffering, and download files faster and just enjoy browsing in a very very fast way for security it has a fast and accurate in display fingerprint scanning technology and a face unlock technology that works even in low light for battery this device is equipped with 4300 milliampers of juice that is not the biggest around but it isn't the smallest either actually anything above 4000 mAh is considered as quite large at this price point in our pc mark work 2.0 battery life test this recorded 7 hours and 49 minutes of usage this score is lower compared to other phones we tested with same or even lower battery capacities that is likely due to its use of a 90 hertz panel which eats battery faster compared to other 60 hertz screens as our secondary phone it lasted for one day 17 hours and 50 minutes and the total screen on time since last full charge is 7 hours and 12 minutes and guys that type of screen on time is considered as decent in general you can still use this phone for around a day on a single charge even under heavy usage for charging this is the fastest in the country yet for the price it has a 65 watt super VOOC power brick out of the box. Yes guys, it is included in the box unlike other brands. And this type of charger is considered as small for its output. That's very impressive. However, you have to remember these things. Number one, you should use this charger to charge this phone. Number two, you use an OPPO VOOC cable. Other cables are not working with the Super VOOC 65 watts charging. I only tested a few from other brands that works with this. But to be sure, use the stock charger in the box of this phone. And based on our experience, using the Super VOOC flash charge technology, the Super VOOC 2.0 technology, it can fully charge the phone from 0 to 100% under 40 minutes. That's super fast. For software, this device runs with Android 11. That Android 11 OS is paired with the Color OS 11.1 skin. And unlike before, Color OS is no joke anymore. This type of Android skin is now considered as clean looking. It is quite fast. The dark mode works the screen gestures are just okay and the only noticeable caveat of the color or skin this time is the few noticeable bloatwares like for example some apps like the solo uh, oppo relax music party but a lot of them are useful for oppo users so i don't really mind it that much i also like that it has gesture screen controls aside from the usual android keys 
Although my only concern is this, I cannot swipe right to go back. You need to swipe left first before you switch back to whatever you are browsing or looking at. Other than that, this is a clean Android skin. It is fast and I don't have major issues with it. Now here's a summary of the things that I like and dislike about this device. Number one, I like its stylish and slim build. Number two, the great display. Number three, it has good cameras. Number four, it has respectable performance. Number five, it has super fast charging speeds. And number six, it has 5G connectivity. The cons, number one, battery life could be better. Uh, we noticed that its battery drains faster compared to other Oppo smartphones in the past that we tested and the storage is non-expandable. It is just clear that the battery of this phone drains faster than what we expected. Hopefully when the final software of this phone is already out, the consumer ready software, that problem won't exist anymore. Our verdict at 23,999 pesos, this is a solid all-around smartphone. It is slim, handy, stylish and quite fast at the same time. This also has a great display and the fastest charging speed among all sub 25,000 pesos smartphones. Also like what Oppo advertised, we find this phone to be good for taking photos and videos. It isn't perfect and it doesn't have the speediest chip for the price but this could be a good choice for those who are looking for a 5G ready smartphone with a great display, decent performance, super fast charging, and good cameras without shelling top money. If content creation on a mobile phone is your priority, this is arguably the best test. Overall, it is a pretty good one. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with our review? Do you like this phone? Please let us know in the comments and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe and bye-bye!